So um, I, I can I offer um, zero um, um, zero step solutions um, to people who have a pro have a hard time getting in. There. And even if the worst case scenario occurred that you have a house that have too many steps and everything, you can always consider adding an addition to your home. So it can have all the features there that 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 you will get. Even if you went to a, a assisted living or anything like that, you, you'd be in your home. And that's a difference to a lot of people. They don't want to go move into a place that they're going to feel they consider restricted, basically. They want to stay in their home. The home they raise their families with. The homes they save their money to go buy. So, you know, as we get older, you know, we have to address certain things. We can't get up the stairs like we used to or or something happened, unfortunately, of a catastrophic event. Um, you know, we have the technology that we can go retrofit their home. Um, so um, this is one of the things we can use um, 203K money for to retrofit their home so they can stay in their home. Um, instead of being the first option, you know, they got to sell. Good luck. Good evening, good people. Welcome to another 203K Tuesday. I'm your host, Aaron, the house person. And this is the place you come to find out everything you don't know about the 203K loan and learn how to use that loan to help create, build, and sustain generational wealth. So um, like I told y'all, I took a little bit of a break, right? I mean, you noticed that. Hopefully you noticed it anyway, but uh, hopefully you missed me, right? Uh, but I took a break for a good reason. Um, I've been working to help people. I mean, that's what I've been doing, but also working to build a network of resources for you guys around the country. Because again, the 203K loan can be used in all 50 states and guess what? U.S. territory. So I don't know if you remember my previous episode uh, with uh, Francis down in Puerto Rico. And again, you, if you've seen episodes, you know I talk about Puerto Rico a lot because it's a lovely place and you can purchase there just like you purchase here. So um, again, U.S. territories uh, are included uh, when using this loan. So, But I've been building a network of people in order to have resources for you guys. And uh, my next guest, uh, Mr. Walter Williams, that's exactly what happened. Someone called me off one of the videos they saw and said, hey, I'm looking to renovate my property uh, here in Detroit. And um, I told him, I was like, well, look, I, I don't necessarily have any resources there now, but I'm going to find you some. And uh, that's what I that's what I did. Right. So that's how I ended up meeting Walter. Um, Walter Williams with PPT Inspections, PPT, right? Paul Paul, but not Paul Paul, but People, Places and Things, LLC, right? PPT Inspections. Um, he is also the regional chapter of NAFAC, National Associations National Association of FHA Consultants. He's just fumbling all over his words today, but <laughs> that's okay. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring in Mr. Walter Williams, and we're going to get started. Hey, Walter. Hey, Aaron. How are we doing today? So wonderful. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, so thank you for being here. Um, you know, I, I know your time is valuable, so I appreciate you lending some time to myself and uh, my viewers and um, to the viewers who will see this at a later date as well. So um, what I normally like to do is just jump right into the questions, because a lot of times some of the answers or some of the, the normal conversation and interviews will be answered throughout this question. Q&A process. And okay. then on the back end, dive into a little more about you, your business, and just anything else real estate related. Is that cool? That's fine. All right. Good, good, good. So um, first question is, do you know the 203K process? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> From start oh, to finish, right? <laughs> you're talking about a thousand pages, man. That's a lot. <laughs> Well, yes, um, in order to do my job in an efficient manner, yes, I know the process. Um, the process 
it's a daunting process to most folk, but at the end of the day, everybody be happy with it. It's a process that only protects, it protects the borrower, it protects the lender, and the contractor walk away happy because he made some money. So yes, I know the process. Okay. And it was actually a two-part question, so I apologize for not getting the second part out. What the, no the second part of that question is, and are you active on the uh, consultant list? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Um, all right. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So right in the question two, what is your uh, 203K consultant ID? That is P1528. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. That's like your yeah, American Express. Don't leave home without it. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you become active um on the list well i became i be, i became active in 2009 mm -hmm. um to be honest it was one of those things that at that time we were just we were still in the housing financial crisis so um you know my previous but my, not my previous but my current business um I was doing residential design work. So when the slowdown occurred, you know, you know, I, you know, home inspections ticked up. So I started doing home inspections. So I was trying to find ways to augment my income. So I read an article on 203K, um, credentialed, qualified to do the education process and everything. Got on the roster in 2019. I'm, excuse me, 2009. I'm sorry. I'm still waiting on that letter. I got an email from HUD saying that you account, you know, you're consultant. They said they're supposed to send me a letter. I'm still waiting on that letter. <laughs> still. <laughs> it, it, it may have uh it may have gotten lost in the mail. Who knows? But Man, uh, that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> no, long no, time. no shade to 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 the uh the company or the, the organization that sent it out, and no shade to the organization that's supposed to deliver it. No shade. But <laughs> yeah, no shade. <laughs> um Man, okay, so you said design. So was that was your prior industry prior to getting into two or three Ks? You were doing designs. That's correct. That's correct. That was um, at that time. Um, I was designing homes for people. Uh, it was a. Uh, it was it was a, it was booming up here in Michigan. It was uh, um, I was doing primarily um, drafting work, starting off with you know elevated to. Um, doing my own design work and um, it was nice to see your projects for it, but it was a, a wonderful time until that bubble to the crash hit actually when the bubble crash hit and what yes. a lot of people don't know about it occurred in Michigan three years before it occurred nationwide really so around 2005 man it was like like a door slammed shut for new builds and, 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 and additions so it took a while for people to get this equilibrium, um, but you know, family got to eat, so I had to do what I had to do. <laughs> so, wow. Okay. So yeah, I, I hadn't heard that one. Wow. Um, do you know like like what was the circumstances around why it happened there so much sooner than everyone you know countrywide or? Well, basically, you know, in Michigan we were so heavy, depending on the automobile industry. And mm -hmm. if it when it goes, everybody's happy. But when it stopped, you know, it stopped. So gotcha. you know, we was you know we was recovering, but the automobile industry was late in the game. So that was the beginning. Then mm -hmm. when they had the foreclosure issues going on, that like a double win in the in the region. So what happened, you know, on the design side, per se, we still mm -hmm. haven't recovered from it. Because a lot of our builders and, and, and contractors, they went south or they went west. They never came back. <laughs> so, oh, wow. So, you know, they're having fun in Georgia or North Dakota, not so much in Michigan because right. they haven't came back because of the automobile industry. So that's wow. why it happened earlier. You know, you know, our recession started, like I said, a few years before the housing boom. I mean, bus. So, but we're making it. we all right. We all okay. not <laughs> okay, so what I just heard um, in the midst of that is that there's opportunity for those who want to relocate up there and uh, provide some services. Exactly, exactly. Come on, come on back to Michigan. The weather <laughs> is good most of the time. <laughs>
most of the time. <laughs> yeah. All right. So as far as the drafting and design business, um, how long have you been in that business um, in general? Well, this is going on to my 20th year in November. Okay. Um, so I've been in the building trades for one um, form of another, like I say, about 20, about 28 years. Um, so, you know, I, 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 learned, I, I learned my trade through design. So one of the things that, um, you know, one of the things that I, I'm, I'm, I'm real aware of is how things are built and how certain builders build certain, a certain way, a certain things. Um, you have builders that build, you know, they do that, you know, that high uh, volume in terms of they got to knock these houses out. And sometimes when they do that, they miss something. So as the as the draftsman, you know, it's my job to you know, make sure stuff is is designed properly, built properly, so it can be built properly. So um, that's how I learn building materials. That's how I learn how certain contractors react to certain situations. That's how I learn the thing called shortcuts that they use. But at the end of the day, at least I, 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 at that experience that I received, I learned how how houses put together. I know how a house can stay together with the right people in play, the right contractor, the, the right engineer, the right architect, the, the right, uh, you know, everything got to be in sync with each other. So um, that's how I segued that into um, um, home inspections and later renovation consulting. Okay. All right. As far as credentials, do you have any like extra credentials, certification, anything of that nature? Oh, I have a few. <laughs> I have a few. Um, right now, um, through uh, the Home Inspection Association, Intonachi, uh, I am a ma- I'm a certified master inspector. Um, I've been doing that since good God, about 2016, so to speak, when I joined that organization. Um, I also joined, I also was, I'm also an associated member of um, um, ARC Consultants. Um, we talked to uh, Garrett a couple of interviews ago. He's a member, um, and um, you know, you know, trying to get the word out on, on renovation loans. Uh, right now, I am a um, Northern Chapter President of the National Association of FHA Consultants. Um, um, how I got into those mixes is the same thing about education. Um, I have this. I have an associate's degree in architectural design. Um, I, uh, I, I banty about trying to learn more about the trade that I'm in. So, uh, you know, how I, you know, join these organizations, the same thing uh, we do. Once we get credential, we want to stay credential, you know. So learning as much as I can about the changing trends in the industry, you know, I'm, I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to learn as much as I can so I could be a, 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 a I could be a plus into um, a borrower or into the lending side. So that's where I'm at today. Mm. Okay. Well, not, I mean, that's great. Um, it, that, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I wrote down. It is. Things. It is. I don't, I don't even think I got everything <laughs> down that you said, but um, so certified master inspector, uh, mm-hmm. art consultant. So the art consultant, what, what it, can you tell me a little more about that? Well, it's, it's, it, you know, it's it's just uh, it's it's an organization mm. trying to um, have standards for um, FHA consultants or okay. two FHA consultants, okay. um, just like um, National Association of FHA consultants. The same thing. Right. We're trying to bring standards into this profession that we're in. You okay. know, just like the Home Inspectors Association, they have associations, so they can in, not only you know have membership, but to, to be a positive force in, in, into our industry. Mm-hmm. So we can learn things that's going to, again, benefit the borrower, benefit everybody's involved. Um, it's a process. Okay. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So if you had to guess, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not expecting you to have the exact number, but mm-hmm. uh, as far as two or three K inspections, how many would you say you've completed uh, since you have been in the business? Oh, good God. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say about several hundred. You said um, several, several hundred. Gotcha. Cool, Can't cool, give cool. you the exact number, 
Right. Uh, because the, you know, to do to do rehab uh, inspections or rehab projects, you got it's not just one and done. You know, right. it's a process. You're talking about a, a six to nine month process, depending on the job. Mm-hmm. You're going to be going out there doing draw inspections. You're going to be mm-hmm. doing out, you're going out there doing feasibility studies to determine, you know, whether or not the property is worth being renovated. Mm-hmm. You know, so you have to go. You got to go out there. You're going to get muddy. You're going to get rained on, snow, that kind of thing. Um, just to you know, do right by the borrower. You, you know, so that's the end of the day. They're going to they they got to put the bill once they turn over from the construction loan to. The mortgage, so they had to put the bill. So they rather be in their their palace, so to speak. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, all right, all right. So, do you use a third party system, or did you like create your own system to generate your your your, your feasibility studies, reports, and things of that nature? And in the beginning, I used to write my own reports. And, you know, it was strict; it was narrative in nature. Um, and as much as I, I like doing it, I'm one of those guys who like to be detail oriented. It just took a lot of time. So, mm-hmm. um, I banning about a few softwares. I ended up with um, Genesis Tour PK, that is my um, go to um, software. Okay, Genesis Tour PK. Mm-hmm. All right, so what would you say is the most complicated? Two or three K project you've been a part of. Glad you asked. <laughs> it's not a particular project. Mm-hmm. It's a process. Okay. Um, most of my um, renovate, well, most of my two or three Ks occur when I get called way after the project gets done. I mm. mean, they was they was doing one thing, then something came up on the credit score, a new product comes up, whatever the case may be. I get called in after the borrower have a contractor. The lender is on a deadline to get this thing closed, and they expect me to be a miracle worker. Okay, I just need to work right up, boom. And those are the worst kinds because, quite frankly, the biggest issue the borrower have and the contractor at the end of the day and the lender is the fact of the managing ex- expectations. The process, once it gets going, is a beautiful thing to see, to behold. Mm-hmm. Getting that engine started, it's another story, especially if they call me late. So I had to go and manage expectations to the borrower, to the contractor. And to the lender. So them, them the hardest ones because they expect it. And you know, if you if you talk to them, especially if you talk to the borrower, they'll tell you they've been in this process for a long time. They thought it was going to be one thing, then end up being something else for some condition, some reason outside of their reason, you know, but they stuck with it. They they found the house they want. And especially in this market today, that it's a it's a um, seller's market. The, that the house is gone if it's not handled properly. Yep. So when I get called in <laughs> and they say, Mr. Williams, I need you to, I need to work right up in a week and I have to bust their bubbles, that, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because there's a lot of moving parts with this. Um, so, but by the time I talk to all the parties involved, they understand. They may, you know, they, they, they understand because the expectations become manageable. You know, it takes time to get a contractor's bid to line up with what HUD wants it done. You know, with the materials and labor separating in 35 categories, that mm-hmm. takes time. It takes time for a contractor to, uh, to, to, to come up and say, okay, well, I need a deposit. And you have to tell them, well, the only deposit you're going to get is going to be off materials, and even then that's going to be 50%. They didn't know that, you know, I hate this world. A lot of them didn't know that at the time. They thought they were going to do one thing. Um, it's kind of rough to explain to the borrower why this process is what it is, especially they're getting pressure from the realtor, they're getting pressure from the seller, they're getting pressures all over. But my job as a consultant is to manage expectations. So they, at the end of the day, we all be on the same page. And that's how it's going to work. 
But once the project gets started, it's um, it goes pretty, it go pretty well. It go pretty well. So at the end of the six month process, everybody be happy. They walk away happy. So the, that was a lot to unpack. Uh, yeah. Now, now <laughs> one of the things that I heard that sounds like a pretty common theme based off of what you said was that people are doing things out of order. Um, it sounds like, cause I, I, I preach about strength of team all the time. Like you're, you're only as strong as your weakest link, right? All the cliche yeah. phrases you can think of. And as far as two or three K is concerned, you know, if you don't have the strongest team, then you will be in a situation where you're doing things out of order. So you coming in at the, 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 the 25th hour means that either the realtor and or the loan officer did not put people, you guys, you consultant in the right position because you guys are supposed to be in there before the contractors exactly. even contact you. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, when you get out of order, so that's when, like you said, the expectation part, that's when people's expectations are, you know, out of whack because the contractor is expecting one thing. The the buyer, if it's a buyer or even the current homeowner is expecting one thing. And of course, the lenders are expecting something as well. And when those things don't match up, you got, you know, you got to come in as the peacemaker and, and just kind of, you know, let me get this iron out. And oh, man, it's a whole lot of wrinkles right here. A whole lot of wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, so it, and, it, and that, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. It, it, look, part one of the reasons why I love doing what I'm doing is because I'm dealing with people. Mm -hmm. And despite the issues of the day, it's not that it can't be fixed. It can be fixed. Mm -hmm. But like you say, I'm coming in as the peacemaker. <sighs> they may not like what I tell them, but at the end of the day, they appreciate it. Because at the end of the day, everybody wanted, look, the contractor wanted to get paid. Got it. Right. The lender want to close its books on that law. No worries. Yep. The borrower want to enjoy the home. They're going to be in. They're, they're, the home, they're not going to move anytime soon. And so it's a win-win at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but once we get over that hurdle about the the expectation level, again, it's the, the, the process, it's, it'll go a lot smoother. It really will. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And I thank you for sharing that experience, uh, which sounds like a mixture of experiences with a common theme. Because again, folks, I, you know, I, I preach on it a lot. Like the order of operation matters, strength of team matters. And, you know, that, that's what this platform is for, to present people with the best information possible on how to successfully navigate the 203K process. Because yeah. like you said, it is a process. And there are ordered steps that you should take. And if you skip a step, you know, you may not uh, necessarily like the results or um, the fact that you have to do some corrections to skipping that step. So, yeah. Um, yeah. all right. So if somebody, <clears throat> well, mm, let me back up. So, yeah, no. So if somebody is, uh, you know, they, they listen to the interview, watch the interview and they say, okay, well, who does he work with? Do you have some past or current clients that you can refer them to to say, hey, you know, give them a call. You can see how I do what I do and what their experience is and was. Yes. Um, you know, when, when you go on my website, I have a gallery of before and after shots of clients um, that uh, I manage projects with. And mm -hmm. they are still excited over the process um, just to see a house that... Um, you know, one minute away from being a uh, demo and end up being their dream home in a neighborhood they never thought they'd be in. Can't beat that. Can't do mm -hmm. it. So yes, I have, yes, to answer your question, yes, I have um referrals. You know, they want to they want to check it out. I have no problem with it. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right. So I mean, <laughs> pretty harmless. That was the actual interview portion of everything. So uh we got through that. Uh question. So the Detroit market, what do you guys um, are you seeing that people are like actually tapping into and taking advantage of the two or three K loan there, or you know, is it like a slow growth situation? Well, what do you what have you been seeing? Well, funny as you ask, <laughs> it's I, I mean, when I was preparing for this interview, I, I just went into my uh, systems just to see where I'm at because you know, when we had our conversation, I was leaving one job to go to another job, <laughs> that's how busy I've been. So I looked at it, I find, you know, it's, it's like for 
Right now, I'm managing 11 projects right now. Okay. Um, for That's a lot for one man out. It's a lot. and uh, But it's manageable. That's what I love about it. Mm-hmm. So the market is, you know, right now, Detroit is growing in what we call historic neighborhoods. It's growing mm-hmm. like leaps and bounds. Um, and because of the fact that this is a seller's market, there's a lot of first-time home buyers. It's feeling disappointed. That's the best word I come up with because they can't get into the house of their dreams because right. by the time they put an offer in, somebody come in and see them to snatch it. Yeah. So the, the the rehab process has gone exceedingly well. I, I mean, I'm getting like I said, I've been getting like inquiries like about two to three calls per week. Mm. Um, can the renovation, you know. I need a consultant. I, I, I need I need somebody to come out here and do the process. And because and, and that's not even counting what HUD did the first of the year by um, getting rid of two thirds of the consultants on the roster. Mm. So it's a combination of things that's going on that's keeping um, it's keeping consultants like myself busy mm-hmm. in this market. Okay, okay. Now this of uh, the eleven that you're working on. How many would you say, or what's the ratio between uh, buyers or so future homeowners and current homeowners? Like, is it a mixture half and half or? Right now, it's like, it's more like, uh, like two thirds, one third. Um, two thirds are new home buyers. Mm-hmm. One third are um, people that staying in their homes. They want to get it renovated, things like that. So that, that ratio has been pretty constant. Since okay. uh, I'm starting this process, when I got started, so it's pretty constant. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, because I noticed as I've been, you know, researching and just just trying to see what's going on surveying the land, I noticed that honestly, a lot of folks did not know that two or three K can be used for current homeowners. You know, uh, a lot of people I've spoken to just initially think, oh yeah, that's the house, that's the loan where you can buy a house and fix it up, right? Yeah, you can do that, but you can also refinance and recreate your space. You know, that's perfectly okay too. And for those who are um, in the in the home and you know maybe looking to move, but realizing, hey, if I sell my house, I don't have any place to go. You can recreate your space and enjoy it a lot more. And then, if you still decide to move, now when you move, you're selling for top dollar because your home has been renovated. So. Um, you know, I just think that again, lack of information, good information, <laughs> um, is is what's keeping people from you know making uh, the best decisions. So, um, so but you said two thirds and one third. Okay, that's not bad. So, of the two thirds, are all of those single family homes or any of those uh, any multi families? Well, it's all out of out of the, out of the two thirds, probably two of them are multi families. Okay, the rest of them are single families. Uh, some of those are in historical districts, and mm-hmm. uh, um, so they, you know, they're trying to leverage, you know, trying to find something so they can leverage. With but like I said, the market here in Detroit has been extremely, extremely, extremely high. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have like a, a plethora of multifamily between duplexes and, and quads, oh. or is it kind of you do? We have a lot. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> we have a lot. Now I see. we have a lot of um two family um family um flat we call them two family flat the duplexes um okay. we have some quads in some areas you know so we have a lot of, we have a we have a lot of mixture of um of, of residential homes in Detroit um you know I I you know it, like I said it's the, I'm surprised that the market is last this long but it's all over the country so I'm not surprised in that way. But in Detroit, especially, um, since a lot of um, uh, companies move their headquarters downtown and people moving into the city trying to find something affordable, it's um, it's nice to see. I just use that word. It's nice to see. It. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So uh, behind your name, in a couple of places, you have you know some 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 letters. So I, I don't know what they stand for. So I'm going to ask you, uh, CP. BD, what does that stand for? Okay, I am a, oh, my credentials again. <laughs> I'm a certified uh, professional building designer. Um, okay. 
Um, I got credentialed in 2006. Um, on the organization I belong to, and, um, we call them AIBD, American um, Institute of Building Design. Um, you know, you could look at the look, you look at the organization like the AIA, American Institute of Architects. But this is just in the building design. It's more to again increase our knowledge um, because increase our knowledge because you know to be called an architect you got to be credential no worries they they did the work i'm happy that's great uh for those who didn't get um, um registered then there there's the building design aspect of it so um that's been my tech like i said I've been, i'm still designing home for people so you know that hasn't stopped so it's just the fact that you know is get as much education i could possibly can that is why I have those initials after my name, because of the fact that I put the work in, uh, you know, I, you know, study, have to, again, get certified every year and everything. So, you know, when somebody come to me with their, with their largest investment they're going to make, whether or not they want to do a rehab loan with it or whether or not they want to add an addition to it, you know, I'd be able to give them the best advice I can. Um, best drawings I could put together so they can live in their forever home. Okay. Okay. Next up is uh, CAPS, C-A-P-S. Ah, yes, CAPS. Um, that is um, Certified Aging Place Specialist. And that's okay. from the National Associate, Association of Home Builders. Um, it, you know, that is strict. That is more for home modifications. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the price of you know of your home you stay in your home for good god well most of your most of your time in terms of when you get off from work and go stay at home you, you do a lot in your home so you put a lot of money into your home you know you bought that home whether or not you bought a new home or you bought an existing home you put a lot of money to it they don't fit they don't seem that i want to leave my neighborhood so as you get older your our health condition changes from time to time. Um, mm -hmm. Some in the city, you know, it could be something in the accident that, you know, you have to um, modify your home. That's the purpose of um, having that CAP certification so I can do an assessment, a home assessment, um, to, to see what recommendations <clears throat> that I can give that person so they can stay in that forever home. Um, you know, right now, you know, I mean, in Detroit area, you have a lot of people, you have a lot of, um, um, people that in a wheelchair, um, they built ramps and stuff, and which is fine. They have to get around. And get it. But I come from the design side, which is say, you know what? If we can design that ramp more aesthetically pleasing into that house, into that neighborhood, if I have to sell it, it won't be an eyesore. So that I came, I came from the design part portion of it. So same thing, especially in Detroit, we have an older um, home stock. And you have a lot of steps you have to get into your home. You got to get into your home from the uh, uh, from the walkway to the front entrance. So you got to go through steps that way. You got to have your threshold. You got to step over. So um, I, I can I offer um, zero um, um, zero step solutions um, to people who have a pro have a hard time getting in. There. And even if the worst case scenario occurred that. You have a house that have too many steps and everything. You can always consider adding an addition to your home, so it can have all the features there that 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 you would get, even if you went to a, a assisted living or anything like that. You, you'd be in your home, and that's a difference to a lot of people. They don't want to go move into a place that they're going to feel they consider restricted. Basically, they want to stay in their home, the home they raised their families with. The homes they save their money to go buy. So, you know, as we get older, you know, we have to address certain things. We can't get up the stairs like we used to, or or something happened, unfortunately, of a catastrophic event. Um, you know, we have the technology that we can go retrofit their home. Um, so um, this is one of the things we can use um two or three K money for to retrofit their home. So they can stay in their home um, instead of being the first option. You know, they got to sell. <laughs> so uh, absolutely unscripted. I appreciate you saying that because that is one of the things that 
I make sure to include, you know, if I, if I got the numbers correctly, I believe there's 10,000 people turn 65 every day. The baby boom is large generation yep. period. You know what I mean? To ever, ever hit this country. <laughs> and um, people do want to stay in their homes. And again, two or three K loan is something that can be used. If those stairs are too cumbersome, like you just said, you can make an addition to your home. You can retrofit your existing home to create that ensuite on the main level. So once you get in your house, I'm good. I can get to the kitchen on my own. You know, I mean, I don't have to go up and down those stairs, but I still have upstairs to use for whatever. But right. now my home is just that much more comfortable for me as the homeowner, and I can enjoy it. And you know, I can I can be here. Like this can be my forever home. I don't have to go to assistant living. They can come to me if that's needed or whatever. But um, but yeah, no, I, I thank you for saying that. And so caps. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna tell everybody you got caps. You don't have cap. Okay, you need no. <laughs> But that's but that's good though. Um, as far as on the design aspect and the the zero step solution, I like that. Yeah, we call it um, universal design. That's what we call it. Say again. We call it universal design. Universal design. Okay. Yeah. Or you can call aging aging in place. You know, we got yeah. a lot of yeah nomenclatures for that, but it's the same thing to make the house um to make the house um. I say modifiable and you stay there forever, so to speak. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Okay. I like that a lot. So what what are your coverage areas? Um, how far outside of Detroit do you do you travel? Oh boy. <laughs> and you can do like okay. you can do either miles or or time, whatever, you know. Oh, don't worry, say hey, look, I'm gonna tell you. Um uh, the the longest i put it this way. I went like about 240 miles to, to do a, a, a 2 or 3K um, consultant. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I'm one of those guys that um, is my father's fault because I was, I was always behind him. He was an upholsterer and he went all over to get, to get the job. He, gotcha. he just wasn't, he wasn't just Detroit only. He was everywhere mm-hmm. so i got that bug so you know my job takes me to like i said that's uh kalamazoo michigan that i went to the duet to and <clears throat> but i go where it's needed because one of the things i do know is you do enough good work people going to refer you and sometimes they'll say something like oh do you do inspections in ohio I'll say sure i do inspections in ohio. i'm licensed in ohio i can do inspections in but I also could do two or three Ks in Ohio too. Okay. Uh, I go where it's needed within reason, I should say, because of the fact that you know you want to do right by people. At least I want to do right by people. Mm-hmm. And if if they take the time to refer me to a friend of theirs, a family member, I'm not going to. If I, if I can't do it, I let them know. I even help them find somebody that will do right by them. But if it's something that's okay, well, you know what? Yeah, it's over there, 150 miles away. Yeah, I could drive there. Just give me a nice day. I'm gone. <laughs> okay. Road trip. Road trip. <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> Kalamazoo. Okay. Kalamazoo. <laughs> Is it how big? I don't want to talk about anybody. I'm about to say that sounds like it don't have a lot of traffic lights, but it could. <laughs> I don't want to talk about anybody. I mean, I've been in some small towns driving around Maryland and we are <laughs> once you leave like major metropolitan areas it's very country here so um yeah I've seen some things <laughs> <laughs> no <Nope. Okay. laughs> man oh man so I had the pleasure of sitting in uh, on uh, the NAFAC National Association of FHA consultants uh, meeting back in March. And I heard some news that, that kind of took me by surprise. I'm like, what? So uh, there's like a small group of people out here kind of advocating to change you guys' role or like eliminate consultants altogether. Um, mm-hmm. How crazy is that? Like, I think it's act- absolutely crazy. But as a consultant, like, what, 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 you know, what do you think when you hear something like that? 
Well, I mean, I, no, I, I, but but this you got to keep it PG though. Keep it PG. No, no, no worries. I got you. <laughs> I, I feel that what we talked about earlier about relationships, about communication, most of the issues that's going on is the lack thereof. Mm-hmm. As a consultant, it's, it's my job as a consultant to make everybody walk away from the project happy. And that's mm-hmm. including lenders, that's including realtors. That's including the borrower and the contractor. Mm-hmm. Hearing that <clears throat> is no different than what I'm what I'm experiencing right now um, when they waiving home inspections because the market is so hot, they don't have time to get a home inspection. Or that's part of the that's part of the uh, of the negotiation that okay, I leave it, you have a house, no home inspection. You're gonna take mm-hmm. my word for it. It's a great. It sounds crazy. It really does, but I also, I, but I, but I also, un, I, I also, I don't understand. I think if you come up with a good team that you work with, everybody walk with it, this process happens. You have a few instances that a couple of consultants were bad, like any other profession. You want to have a couple of bad apples, so it's not Absolutely. just consultants only, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we can put the hat blame hat on lenders to realtors. Whatever. That's but that's not our call. I view this as a call. I view this as my job as a consultant is to go out there and do the best I can for the borrower, the lender, and the contractor. We are integral because let's face it, a lot of the contractors out here is not tech self. That's where you have a good consultant come in at to help them out. It's, it's not a it's not it's not a slight on them. It's right. just how it it's is. a fact. Yeah, it's, it's a fact. <laughs> you have a lot of vendors who got burnt by the two or three K process when it first got started. Mm-hmm. But it got it's a lot better now. And one of the reasons why it's better because you have trained consultants doing it, doing our job. That's what makes it better. So when I'm hearing what I heard at that meeting, I'm like, well, this doesn't make sense. But 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 I think it's just like a whole of a few people. It's not a lot, I don't think. I mean, it's just a few people who got the ears of somebody who think it's a good idea to speed up the process by getting them to consult. I don't see it. I, and the only reason I say I don't see it, not and I'm, I'm, I'm I guess I have to say you know, my, my life here would be affected. But it's not about me this time. This is about the borrower. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to call it for what it is about the borrower. Just like it doesn't make no sense having a home inspection way on a purchase that's going to be the biggest purchase you're ever going to make. Not going to work. That's that's idiocy. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, it is, again, it's nothing to do with the people trying to change these laws or change the rules. But come on. I spent six figures on a house. And you expect me to take it as in, sight on scene? No. You wouldn't buy a car like that. <laughs> you definitely not going to buy a house like that. And you're about to spend money that you budgeted, you saved, just to say, okay, I, don't, I can't do my diligence. Well, I, I just say, it's, I just say, you know, I'm not, not to push the wrong button. I think it's crazy. But I also, but I will say this. If you get the right team on your side, then I can prove all the doubters now. So that's what I'm recommending. Instead of us trying to eliminate a, a very crucial point in the, in, 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 the, in the real estate business, let's link up. Let's join together. Let's have discussion. So we won't try to eliminate a livelihood for the sake of you think it's going to speed up the closing faster. That's not going to happen. I mean, I'm saying not going to happen, but we're not doing nobody any good. Who we who are we really benefit? You know we're not benefiting the um, borrower. You're definitely not going to benefit the contractor. So who is going to rep- who is going to benefit from this change? I don't. So I just say let's all sit down at the table. Let's discuss it. Let's hash it out so we can make people's dreams come true. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And um, I mean, I'm still kind of taking it back that that was even suggested, especially by, I don't necessarily know like the specifics of what company, things of that nature, or a group of people, but 
I know that, you know, that some of them were people on the finance side and a part of the consultant's job is to make sure that they get their money, to make sure that the loan that they're part of moves the way it's supposed to move and actually hits the finish line, which gets them paid. So, you know, for you to say, oh, uh, well, I don't think, you know, it's been a couple of bad people or uh, just, just throw the whole group away. That, I, I mean, I'm like, no, no, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, it, it, <laughs> at all, it doesn't make sense. But but, but look at this way, man. You have people that was influenced when the two or three K um, um, model first came out, mm-hmm. and it was a ran it was a ran property. Right. Got to speak truth to power. It was right. a ran property, right. but that was what 30, 30 years ago. Yeah, something like wow. that. Yeah, it's wow. a lot better. <laughs> It's mm-hmm. a lot better now. You just got to get the right team together. 100%. So that's why I say, let's sit down. If you have that kind of grievance, let's all let's get in the same room, lock the door, turn lights on, let's talk, let's let's discuss <laughs> it. We yep. have we have organizations that will help the the the, the lenders, that will help the realtors mm-hmm. educate the power of renovation loans. No, no, I, I notice I'm speaking not only with 203K in mind, I'm speaking with Fannie Mae in mind, speaking mm-hmm. with Freddie Mac in mind, speaking mm-hmm. with VA in mind, because we all have similar models. Yep. As, the, as the consultant, it's our job to make sure not only the money is being spent properly, but to also make sure the fact that the dreams that the borrower will have will come to fruition. And it's, it's, it's the process is already earth shattering, nerve shattering as it is. Just by doing it under the normal circumstances. Right. So I just say, let's, you know, as a collective industry, we need to just, let's have a seat. Let's talk it out. Because I, there is a role for consultants, just like there's a role, I hate to use the word, for lenders. There's a role for contractors. There's a role because our job is to make the borrower transactions as smooth as it possibly can be. Yeah. 100%, 100%. So speaking of borrower, um, not, of course, giving away too many details, you know, uh, per se or whatever. But again, we we met because someone reached out to me saying, hey, uh, I need somebody. And um, due to uh, Catherine Hall with MAFAC, she connected me with you mm-hmm. and um, I connected you with them. And uh, you guys were able to, to meet and, you know, I guess kind of get the process started. Um, so how, how was that meeting? Well, that meeting was education. <laughs> that's, no, that's good. You know, you know, one of the things about one of the things about this process is, you know, you don't know what to expect until you get there. Right. So, you know, I, I saw the photos they sent and uh, went over to the property. And you know, the property it do need some work, no worries. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I told the borrower, like I'm you know, explaining to you, and you know how important it is. Mm-hmm. Getting the right team together would make the process go a lot smoother yep. than if you're just doing it haphazard. Yep. You know, they came in at the right time so I could be able to do my job in the most effective manner, getting that feasibility study done, getting it ready. So when they get the contractors, we just give them that document mm-hmm. uh, with, with the scope of work. And they can go bid on it, come back with the bid, put it together with the write up, boom. That part of it is done. And, and, I, and I feel like, like I said, managing expectations, going back to that, managing expectations. Uh, like I told the borrower, this is not HGTV. This is not a thing that in an hour you're going to have a house in your dreams. It's not like that when you see the first 10 minutes, you get somebody with a sledgehammer and you boom, all this stuff. Right. This is real. This is real world. This is real life. It's still going to take six months by the time you close to the completion of the project. Um, but we have to get there together. It went mm-hmm. really well. It really did. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I think that especially, again, I don't want to give up too much stuff, but the house has meaning. And, and because it has meaning, it's just not. It's not just any purchase. It's, it's a purchase with something, with right. something, some weight attached to that. So, it's an opportunity to be right by the by the borrower, and I'm just excited to 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 get this process going because I can see something 
in this project. Good deal. Good deal. I love it. I love it. Yeah, they um I I had to reach out to them. I know they're still fired up because they were fired up beforehand. So I'm <laughs> I'm more than certain after meeting you and going through the process and um, you know, hearing how you can help them with this process, um, mm-hmm. that they're as equally, if not more, fired up than they were before. So um, I'm excited about it for them, for you, and really for the neighborhood. Because again, oh yeah, <laughs> each property that is you know reimagined and renovated and you know brought back to life, whatever you want to call it, that helps neighborhood values. You know, what exactly. I mean, like that helps. So so now the next person says, hmm, such and such is uh, getting their getting their property worked on. <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to them and see what they're doing. And, you know, the word spreads and now everybody is starting to come around and say, you know what, I think I can do that, too. And now you're driving down the street. You're like, wow, like this is, this is a really <laughs> lovely place to live. I need to see if they got any houses for sale around here. Um, and you can, you know, no, no racial connotation um, um, intended, but you can gentrify your own neighborhoods, you know, and that's. That's no matter who you are, because the gentrification is a process of making new again, you know. So, right, um, right. of course, there's a converse side, unfortunately, um, when you're talking about pricing. But if you're already there, you got the option. That's what the refinance and renovation loan can um, afford you to, exactly. you know, help your neighborhood. But but best case scenario, you're just helping yourself because you're making your home much more enjoyable to live in. So um, good deal. Good deal. Man, so people who are looking for you, where can they find you? <laughs> well, they can find me through various ways. Um, my website um, is um, my 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 rehab That's my website. Uh, or <clears throat> uh, they can go to BPT, P is a Paul, P is a Paul, T is a Tom, inspections dot com it'll take you to the same place um that's my home inspection site and uh, my rehab is my consulting site um i do have a facebook page and i also have a linkedin page as well um and you know i'm more purposeful in trying to utilize thing called social media and um that takes a lot of work but (laughs) I, I, i just want to get the word out because, you know, there's so many things that we can do better as consultants to be of service to the, not only the borrower, but the lender and the contractors as well, that we can all walk away happy with this pro- with this process. So um, kick the tires, feel free. Um, you know, go to my sites. Um, uh, you can leave comments where it's everywhere. You can leave comments there. Uh, and I'll tell you something. Um, I will reach back to you. Um, so I'll give, give you my email address. Um, it is 203k at myrehabconsultant.com. Drop me a line. And I'll be glad to answer any question. Asking the question is free. Answering the question is free. So, but I, it, it's, for me, it's more like educating whoever wants to take advantage of this wonderful product. Call um, two or three Ks. Call um, Home Style Rehab. Call VA Rehab Loan. No. That's my job. My job is to educate. So there's no such thing as a bad question. It's, it, it, it's, especially you're not paying for it. Get as much information as you can. And, 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 I, and I guarantee you, by the time the process is over, you'll be smiling for you. You'll have the home of your dreams. For a lot, for a lot less than what you think, in the neighborhood that you want to be in. I love it. I love it. So look, Walter. Before I let you go, I do have one more thing because I'm I'm someone who is, I guess, fairly descriptive. I love puns and things of that nature. So PPT stands for what? People, places, and things. Okay. And how did you come up with that name? What was the <laughs> What was the thought process of how? Because that's you know. Uh, that's that's a noun. Person, place, a thing. <laughs> but, oh. <laughs> but, but I mean, okay. jumped out of it. I was like, P, okay, I said, okay, I gotta ask him. Like, where, where did he come up with this? So I'll okay. let you go ahead and take it from there. Okay, okay. 
Well, <laughs> my wife and I, um, back in the day, um, you know, we wanted to try a hand in uh, multi-level marketing. Okay. So we had to call it something. Uh -huh. So that's where people place their things. Okay. And after that venture didn't go like you expected, I like the name, so I, I applied it to my business when I started my um, residential design work. People, places, and things, the uh, LLC, that's the official name. Mm -hmm. And um, it just mushroomed. So that's how it got started. <laughs> and um, okay. that's how it got started, yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. So started on the on the MLM side of things and then just kind of you know got repurposed and grew from there. Repurposed, exactly. Got gotcha, gotcha. Now I mean I love the name, people place and things. I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> all oh, right. Well, Walter man, um, again, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, your insight about the two or three K loaning process. And um I'm looking forward to continuing to build with you. Uh, you know, anybody else I got in Detroit, you know, I, hey, I, you need to call Walter, you know, so. No um, <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, thank you. And, thank I, you, thank and you. you know, and I want to thank you because um, like I explained when I talked to you earlier, um, I, I first, I first um, um, got turned on to your, what you was doing back when I was visiting my daughter in Texas. And I just saw you interview Garrett. I'm like, man, this is cool. I like this. So look what happened. A few months later, we were working out, man. I appreciate you what you're doing to educate us. Again, going back to education, to educate us how to not only don't be afraid of this product, but take advantage of it so we can, mm. we can grow our portfolio better. We can stay in the home of our people. So I appreciate everything that you're doing. Keep it up. It's needed. It is needed. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I take that to heart. I appreciate that. <laughs> kind words. I thank you, sir. So, well, look, guys, that's all I got for you this 203K Tuesday. Again, Walter, thank you. And you uh, we'll see you guys next week. Signing out. Peace out. <laughs>